Hey guys, good afternoon. So today I'm going to be working on uh, my door panels, uh, putting my new switch pods in that I picked up at the junkyard. And I wanted to kind of show you guys some of the detail on how I'm putting this stuff together and uh, maybe get some of your input as to what you think it's going to turn out like. But uh, I think they're pretty cool. So I picked up uh, these cool faux aluminum uh, finished uh, pull toggle switches, which uh, is what I wanted for the truck. You know, I want to update the truck, make it a little more modern inside, make, uh, make the door panels uh, kind of match uh, some of the more modern vehicles that are out there these days. Uh, the old 94 uh, need a little updating. So I picked up these panels here, these switch panels. Uh, at my local yard and uh, I got all four of them. I started with the driver's side panel because the the driver's side switch uh, command center is the uh, is the biggest one. The the other ones, this is the passenger door uh, switch pod. They're, they're smaller and gonna be easier to fit in but the, the driver's side one is is longer than the other four or the other three. So um, I started with this one on my driver's side door panel and uh, fits in there pretty decent I think. Uh, it, it's a little bit bigger than the original Ford switch pod but uh, I think I'm able to make it fit in there pretty good and I'm going to make the other door panels match the angles uh, that I have on the switch pods when I show you here in a second. Uh, these switch pods are out of a 03 uh, Mitsubishi Montero full size big Montero with the leather and everything and it's uh it's kind of unfortunate I had to hack out so much of the door panel here I had to hack those leather door panels up which was kind of a shame but uh, nonetheless I got the switch pods that I needed and uh, I think they look great they kinda have a fake aluminum finish to them which I'm not a huge fan of that they're plastic but uh, I think they'll look good against the the tan colored interior that I'm going to put in there and it'll make the make the old Ford look a little more classy. So this is the this is the passenger side switch which has the door lock. The the rear switches are just window up down. They don't have door lock on them, which is normal. Um, I you can see here I took out a good couple inches all the way around and uh, the way I did this was just using my tin snips to to hack the uh, hack the pod section of the plastic ABS panel out um, of the door panel, so that I could get have enough of it that I can trim it down, make it fit nice, and 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 have enough material here that it looks kind of factory. What I really like about these is they're instant up, instant down switches, and um, what I need to get next that I should have got while I was at the yard is the window control box that mounts up under the dash that actually uh, regulates you know how far the window travels before it shuts it off um, should have got that I'll, I think I'll go back to the yard and get that uh, get that command box there and that will give me the one touch up and down function which is kinda nice I'm gonna take you guys over here and show you how the driver's side door panel looks uh, with the pod mounted up in there I've got it tacked into place with uh, some hot glue um, I'm waiting on some more resin. I ran out of resin. I should have ordered a, a gallon to begin with, and I ordered just a couple quarts. And um, a couple quarts would have done what I wanted to do, but um, I ended up doing some extra glass work that wasn't really necessary. So once I get my gallon of resin in here, then I can finish all this work on these switch pods and uh, start doing the body work and getting them all finished out. I so for now, what I'm going to do is fit in all the switch pods get all of those mounted into the door panels and uh, then when my glass gets here I can I can go ahead and finish finish the pods out so let's get to work So let me show you guys here what we look like uh, so far.
This is, of course, my driver's side door panel here that I'm working on. I got the uh, the crack is all closed up here and nicely supported on the back side. Uh, I was able to glass in the chip and uh, that's almost gone. I've got to do a little body work here to finish that off. And I'm going to grind out this crack and use that uh, plastic repair kit here to uh, fill that in. Uh, and you can see I went ahead and used part of the original switch pod mount. Um, I didn't initially want to use those. My, my original plan was to mount the uh, switch pods in the side of the door panel here flush. Uh, but because of the wind wing uh, support rod that runs inside the door right here in this location, I wasn't able to do it that way. So I have to go with the pods. So I went ahead and reattached uh, the original uh, plastic ABS here support and cover for the pod. Uh, I've, this is the trim down Montero pod for the switch and uh, this is the location I'm going to put it in. I've just got it all tacked in with some hot glue here in a few spots. Once I lay some fiberglass in here and support this uh, then I can peel away the, uh, the hot glue. I think it fits pretty decent. It uh, I had to run it at an angle because this driver's side one is so long that I needed uh, I needed to use an angle to to get the length out of it. But this is how we're going to fit. Um, all of this will get closed in with glass, and I'm going to make a nice transition here that will um, cover up the areas I need to cover up and blend them into the door panel so that it uh, all looks as it should. The the biggest challenge I'm going to have is just this upper section here, trimming this in and making a nice curve that will fit into the door panel and not, uh, not interfere with the speaker grill or look out of place. Resting on the armrest here, I think, uh, I think that's going to work just perfect. For tools, of course, I used my trusty uh, DeWalt grinders here uh, for trimming the ABS and getting it fitted. Um, just doing the rough cuts and then a little bit of sanding on these edges. I had to trim this down quite a bit. You know, I, I cut it cut it wide, left myself a few inches all the way around, so I had to had to trim that down and grind those edges smooth. <clears throat> and I think uh, I think it gave me the fit that I'm looking for. Um, this is all going to get glassed into here. Uh, the transition here between the original panel and the switch pod is going to be a nice smooth transition. Um, I think it's going to look uh, look really good in there. So here we are. This is what we look like uh, right now. I've got both door panels sitting here so I could check them out side to side and compare the two. Uh, this is our driver's side master switch console. I don't have the switches clicked down into the bezel just because uh, it'll be harder getting it out and I might tear some of my little hot glue tacks here uh, if I force that thing out of there. So uh, that's what the driver's side is going to look like. The passenger side here uh, is same angle. But I think they look great. Um, I really like the look of these switch panels, so it gives me the, the look I was going for. Uh, I know it's not a hot rod or a street rod or anything, but uh, you know, might give it a little, little class, a little, a little update to the old Ford. Alright guys, that's going to wrap it up for my short and sweet video today. It's uh, part two of the door panel fitment and modifications that I'm doing. Uh, so you see how to fit some custom uh, gauge pods into your door panels and what all you need to uh, take into account for and what what you need to plan for. Um, it's not the most complicated job in the world but it does take some time you know laying up fiberglass takes uh, takes 24 hours every time so that it can set up. Um, the glass that I'm using is a polyester resin for lamination uh, as opposed to uh, the epoxy. I, I tried both and epoxy is great uh, but it's clear and it doesn't laminate well, so uh, the, the resin that I got anyway was, was a finishing type resin, so it's a little thicker viscosity and it's more for uh, top coating and finishing off uh, what you're trying to work with.
The great thing about epoxy versus polyester is that it's super flexible. Uh, so if you're doing just crack repair or fill in some gaps or something on the back of your panels, you know, epoxy might be the right way to go. Get, get the thin epoxy that's a lamination grade epoxy. Uh, and then, you know, you can fix those panel gaps in the back of your door panels and cracks and stuff and still maintain good flexibility in the plastic. My panels are going to be a little more rigid because I tried both methods. The polyester resin is a little more rigid. Uh, and if you use chopped stranded mat like I did on some of those large voids to fill in a large gap, uh, it's not very flexible. If you go to the junkyard and get switch pods like this to do a custom mod, don't forget your pigtails. Make sure you get the plugs, uh, clip the wires off long, leave yourself enough that you can blend those plugs into your existing harness, uh, which is how I'm going to do it here on, on the uh, 94 Ford. I'm going to trim these back uh, a little bit, uh, cut off the original, original plugs, and uh, blend these blend these plugs into my original harness. It's a lot of work. I realize for for an old 94 Ford pickup truck like this, it's probably uh, a little bit overkill. You know, the, the crack repair is something that a lot of you guys probably have to deal with on your truck, but you don't necessarily want custom switch pods. Uh, it was just something I always wanted to put into this truck. I wanted to modernize it and bring it, uh, uh, bring it a little more up to date on the interior. And since I hadn't worked with fiberglass in a while, I thought it was a good uh, refresher and, uh, you know, uh, give me some practice before I take on the dash uh, double din fitment. I'm going to uh, cut in a double din slot in the top of my dash uh, and ex extend up the radio, um, the current hole for the radio and, and double that so I can fit a nice navigation unit into the center, center of my dash. Uh, get rid of that center parcel tray area that's in the top of uh, these old OBS dashes that you can't really put anything in because if you put anything in there it just slides across your dash and hits your passenger in the face when you make a left hand turn. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that area and put a nice double din head unit in there. Uh, for that I'm going to have to use some foam and mock up, a, mock up a nice surround around the double din and then once I have my foam surround cut out I'll cover that in uh, fiberglass cloth, resin that all into the dash, and uh, we'll be all set with that. So for the custom door panel part two, uh, that pretty much wraps it up for me for today. Uh, I heard back from my customer about the, uh, the Mustang, and, uh, so I'll be starting on that here next week, and uh, give it a quick overview, see where we're at on, on uh, you know, replaceable items like uh, we're going to have to replace brake pads, brake lines, flush everything out, uh, oil. may have to drop the oil pan depending on how long it's been sitting and what the condition of the oil looks like that's coming out of it. I'm hoping we don't have to do a rebuild. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to look in the bores and see uh, if I see any rust. If I see any kind of rust inside the bores, then it's going to have to come apart. But we're definitely going to rebuild the carb. Uh, we're definitely going to have to replace all the, the components inside, inside the distributor. Um, all the brake components are getting replaced, uh, possibly even a clutch. And my dad was over here the other day, and he mentioned that if this is a K-code car, which would mean it uh, it had the Hypo 289, if that's the case, then we're going to spend a little more money probably and uh, do a little bit better job on the components that we replace. And I think he's right. If, if it's a K-code car, then we need to reevaluate how much money we want to spend on a proper restoration and actually bring that car back to you know the quality and the, the uh, uh, shape it was in in 1966 when it was built and uh, do a real proper uh, restoration for a car like that. If it's not a K-code car then you know we can spend a little less money and do a more budget uh, budget mild type restoration on it. So we'll see. I'm I'm hoping uh, obviously that it's a uh, K code 289 hypo. I think that would be uh, that would be awesome. It would be a real kick in the ass to uh, to restore and and uh, do a really good job on on getting it back to original and, and getting it uh, getting it back on the road and ready for ready for uh, the the spring and summer shows that are coming next year. So that's it for me today, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. 
Uh, if you have any comments about what I did or suggestions or improvements on how I could get better at uh, doing this fiberglass work and putting these panels together, leave them below. Uh, if you're new, please click subscribe. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up. And uh, if you think I did a decent job, uh, give me a like. Um, thanks for watching.